Hello guys and welcome back to the G-Swirl Show. Today is going to be a slightly different G-Swirl Show to the usual, as we're going to be taking a small trip down memory lane, you know, back to the past. And we're going to be actually talking about one specific G-Swirl driver, well, former G-Swirl driver, um, and future G-Swirl Hall of Famer. So, without further ado, let's get into this video where we're going to be speaking about, you know, Beast Mode Sam. Um, Beast Mode Sam, well, he's considered to be one of the greatest G-Saw drivers in history, and many do consider him also the greatest G-Saw driver of all time, never to have won a championship. Um, I mean, 30, 31 podiums in 37 races is quite impressive. And don't get me wrong, I think because it was mostly in the Gen 2 generation and Gen 1 generation, and as I've said multiple times in the past, you know, with all due respect to uh, everyone who competed in both of those generations, it's nowhere near as hard as it is now in the modern Gen 3 era. So, you know, maybe those stats are, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of stat padding on that behalf, but nevertheless, you know, any driver getting 31 podiums in 37 races is quite, is quite impressive. You know, it's just that consistency to always, first of all, be turning up and then be putting in the results as well. And it wasn't just podiums, you know. He managed to get four feature feature race wins and four sprint race wins in the Gen 2 era. Um, whilst getting um, an additional two more feature race wins in the Gen 1 era as well. So, you know, he definitely had the speed. And I think that is what he's, you know, best known for is... His speed, his one lap pace especially, getting seven poles uh, in his GCL career. Um, so that does show, well, nine poles in general, in, in total actually. Seven of them coming in the Gen 2 era, the other two in the Gen 1. So that does show he did have, you know, decent one lap pace. And I think he actually managed to get the most poles actually. Um... In the Gen 2 Season 1 season. So, yeah, I think his, his one lap pace was phenomenal. Um, but I think there were a few things that just let him down. And one of those things was his complacency. You know, I think Beast Motam, as quick as he was, as a box office of a driver as he was, and as aggressive as he was, I think at times you did see him get a little bit complacent i mean we saw his prime you know arguably or unarguably should i say was halfway through the gen gen 2 season 1 season where at one stage he had a 42 point lead and that was because he was turning up to races that was because he was getting pole and he was leading every lap and winning whilst chico and 75 was struggling in the midfield but then after maggio um the italian grand prix of that of that season Everything just dropped, you know? Um, and I do feel like complacency kicked in um, post-race, if you remember. Him and Chikonas had a little bit of an argument um, because there was meant to be a safety car. A safety car didn't come out, something like that. And um, he did famously said, say, you know, he had the championship in the bag. Chick being chick, he agreed. And I think he even thought that Beast Mode had the championship at, in the bag at that stage. Um, but yeah, I think complacency did play its part a little bit. Um, but I do think if he just turned up more regularly to the Gen 2 Season 2 season, I think he would have, I think he would have actually won the championship because he showed brilliant pace. Um, obviously Chick missed the first few races. Um, so that really would have been his, his time to win the championship, but once again, he didn't take advantage of that opportunity, and I think that was his biggest biggest problem. That was his downfall. He didn't take opportunities when they arised. Um, and that's that's how, you know, he's currently the greatest ever driver in GSOI history, not to win a championship. He's managed to battle legendary drivers such as Chico and Asen 5 and Genius Nature, and even Jacob as well. In the past, he's managed to beat them on track as well. 
So that does show he had brilliant race pace, but his race craft as well was aggressive, very, very aggressive. All right, sometimes it did go over the line, such as Bathurst, Gen 2 Season 1, where him and Tiger Z famously were caught weaving down the, the, the main straights. But nine times out of ten, his defending was, you know, quite clean, but he quickly um, developed rivals, you know, and enemies, and I think that, again, is another downfall of Beast Mode Sam. You know, if you're fighting for a championship, yeah, obviously, it's gonna it's natural for you to not get along with your rivals, but you can't also not be getting along with the steward, and the steward that season, who was DV60, um, well, he just didn't get along with the steward. He didn't get along with her, and, you know, you could argue some decisions maybe did go against him, such as the decision at Spa, where he lost famously lost that race win because FRL hit him from behind, and FRL didn't get a penalty for that. But yeah, it was a bad decision, I guess. But at the end of the day, these well, I'm not even gonna say these things happen because it was a bad decision. I think FRL he shouldn't have won that race. That should have been Beast Mode's race um, to win. But again, it's just being on the wrong side of the of the stewards. Uh, of the shoes liking. Um, I think, you know, all in all, Beast Mode, he definitely had the pace to win championships. But, it was just psychological things, you know, psychological battles, um, which ended up being his downfall. And the things also they said in the press as well, that didn't help him. But, the past is the past now. You can only look forward to the future. So yeah, I guess that's the end of this G-Swar show. Uh, I thought I'd try something different for a change. Next week we should be going back to the um, weekend review. So that should be nice. But yeah, thanks for listening and uh, see you in the next show.